today's brief video, I want to provide you guys with a very simple, efficient, and fast acting technique that you can apply in almost any situation when it comes to battling nicotine or THC cravings. And that's exactly what this technique needs to be because when cravings hit, they tend to hit fast and they tend to hit hard. So you need a solution to that that's also fast and hard hitting. If you wind up enjoying the content in today's video, be sure to check out the pinned comment or the video description for more free and paid resources when it comes to quitting things like nicotine, THC, energy drinks, or adult media content, substances that I once struggled with. So today we're going to talk about a very simple four-step process, and I'm going to tell you guys, you go through the process in the exact order that I'm going to explain. So let's say you sit down and you're getting ready to check some emails for your work and a nicotine or a THC craving hits. Step one is identification of the addicted voice or addicted voice recognition technique. This technique was founded by Jack Trimpey, the author of the book Rational Recovery. And it's really simple to implement. Anytime you hear that fiend voice or that addicted voice in your brain, what you want to do is recognize that it's not part of your human brain. There's the human brain, Frank's brain, that's my brain, and then there's the addicted brain. The addicted brain is speaking to you anytime it's telling you to go use a drug, go spark up another joint, go take another hit off of your vape. That is the addicted brain speaking. And how you recognize it is simply by listening for it, calling it out, and then saying cancel, cancel, cancel. So that's the first step. That's the first step to this four-step process. Recognize when the addicted voice is speaking create separation between your brain and the addicted brain and simply cancel out that thought. Recognize what it's saying and then mumble underneath your breath, cancel, cancel, cancel. You now just put space in between thought and response. And this is huge when it comes to not acting on cravings. Step number two is really simple. The next thing you're going to want to do is disrupt your thinking pattern and start to implement a new habit. Every time you have a craving, always have cold water on hand. You could get like a Yeti mug, fill it up with ice in the morning, and then put a bunch of water in it. Immediately drink cold water. Just take a big chug of cold water. What you're doing is you're training your brain into a new pattern of habit. Instead of reaching for your vape and hitting your vape, now you're reaching for this jug of cold water and you're taking a sip out of that. This is how we change our habits. This is how we change our patterns. That's step number two. Step number three is going to be for immediate stress relief. And I took this from Dr. Andrew Huberman, and it's referred to as the physiological sigh. Double inhales followed by an extended exhale are the fastest way that I'm aware of to bring the mind and the body into a more relaxed. No way. Two inhales through the nose, and then exhale slow through the mouth. One to three of those repeated will bring your level of autonomic arousal down basically to baseline. So when we have cravings, it's our body going into a state of fight or flight response. When you're addicted to a drug, whether that drug is nicotine, alcohol, THC, or marijuana products, your body feels that that substance is just as important as water or food. So when it feels deprived of those things, you enter the state of fight or flight. And that's exactly what a craving is. So we have to get in touch with your parasympathetic nervous system to calm things back down. So after you recognize the addicted voice, cancel the thought, drink the water, and then practice the physiological sigh. This is the quickest way, according to Dr. Andrew Huberman, to access your parasympathetic nervous system. Two deep inhales followed by a prolonged exhale. So I'm sorry, two short inhales followed by a prolonged exhale. This is the quickest way to activate your parasympathetic nervous system and start to turn off that fight or flight response. After that, the next thing you're going to want to do is get up and move. Do some jumping jacks, do some sit-ups, fiddle around in your house, go sweep out your garage, sweep your floor, simply get up and walk in a few circles if you have to. Get up and move. Movement 
creates a release of dopamine. Dopamine is what your brain is craving when it's craving the drug, nicotine, THC, alcohol, whatever the drug is. This simple technique can be implemented almost anywhere with maybe the exception of your car when you're driving. Movement might be a little bit challenging, obviously. But day to day, try this. I promise it works. For most people, just doing the first step, recognizing that your addicted voice is separate than your human brain and canceling out that thought will be enough to forego a majority of cravings when you're quitting nicotine or THC products. After you recognize the addicted voice, drink some water, change your patterns, change your habits, partake in the physiological side, do that a handful of times to calm yourself down and activate that parasympathetic nervous system, and then immediately dive into some movement. Distract yourself, get busy doing something else. Now, some other simple bonus tips when it comes to managing cravings, especially if we're talking about nicotine, would be eating fruit. A lot of times when people develop nicotine cravings, they enter a state of brain fog, and this could commonly be associated with the drop in blood sugar that you're experiencing. So by eating fruit, not only are you getting the sugars and some of that dopamine release, but you're also going to temporarily spike your blood sugar levels, which can help when it comes to cravings and brain fog. The other thing that you're going to want to do is focus on getting a good night's sleep. It's been proven that people who sleep well, who achieve deep sleep, have a lot more willpower than their counterparts who don't achieve deep sleep. Although you don't need willpower to quit, it certainly doesn't hurt. And a state of sleep deprivation damages our willpower or our ability to say no to things. That's why when people are under the influence of alcohol, the next day, they're more likely to eat crappy food and not be as productive. Yes, it has to do with alcohol poisoning the body, but it also has to do with those centers of our brain responsible for willpower and taking actions that we actually care about that were damaged or poisoned the night before from the alcohol consumption. So eat fruit, focus on sleep, and I can't recommend exercise enough. When someone's quitting smoking or quitting vaping, I typically recommend exercise first thing in the morning because this is what's going to get your endorphins going and this is how you're going to get that morning hit of dopamine. Instead of rolling over in bed and reaching for your vape when you first wake up, roll over, get outside, go for a walk, go to the gym, get that morning dopamine hit from exercise first thing in the morning. When it comes to nicotine and THC, we usually tell people to give it about 90 days. That's approximately three months. In most cases, for most people, after about 90 days, the cravings are going to subside. Now, Long term, a year after quitting, two years after quitting, you might find that you get the occasional craving here and there. Go back to this four-step process. Addicted voice recognition, cancel, 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 drink some water, do some deep breathing or the physiological sigh or box breathing, whatever breathing technique you like, and then immediately get to movement, change your physical patterns, get that dopamine hit from physical activity, not from the drug. Implement these things and then come back to this video and let me know if you tried it and let me know what you think. I would love to see it in the comments below. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, you could always schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with our offices where I'll share with you guys everything that I know when it comes to quitting nicotine and THC in a concise, time-efficient conversation. Or you could just follow me right into the next video where I talk a little bit more about managing nicotine and THC cravings and the mindset that you need to overcome them. I'll see you guys in the pinned comment, video description, or in the next video. Talk again soon.